prayer begins on page 78. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. On page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with a whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins, O our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 105 begins on page 738. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned, so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, a priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness, and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. 
But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this may be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. Here ends the reading. Canticle 16 begins on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of a servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Here ends the reading. Canticle 21 begins on page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be your judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. 
the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living of the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among our nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of conquer, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all the salt of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard word of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. At this time, I invite your own prayers and of uh, intercessions and prayers of thanksgiving for the Holy Catholic Church in every place, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Chip, our bishop, for Ron, our priest, and Keith, our deacon, for all presbyters, deacons, seminarians, religious, and ministers in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, for those living in troubled places throughout the world, for those in positions of public trust, especially Donald, our president, Philip, our governor, and Dennis, the mayor of this community, that they will make decisions wisely and promote the common good. We pray for those who are ill in any need or trouble, especially Chris, Ruth, Rose, Sue, Sandy, Norm, Lily, Greg, Claire, Randy, Mateo, Pamela, Kathy, Samantha, Walt, Joanne, Joanne, Megan, Christine, Kim, Marlene, Melanie, as well as those known to you. We pray for those who have died. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. We pray for those celebrating their wedding anniversary this week. We pray for those connected to our parish family who are serving in our armed forces. James, Brandon, Ryan, Jordan, Bertie, Will, Trey, Raymond, Brian, Jerry, Bob, David. We pray for teachers, students, administrators, and aides, and all those returning to their studies. We pray for doctors, nurses, medical staff, scientists, contact tracers, cleaning crews, for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders. And we thank you, O Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for our families, our friends, our neighbors, for our church, for the opportunity to serve others. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. This passage from the Gospel according to Matthew contains one of Jesus' hardest sayings. If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Who needs that when it's hard enough just to pay the bills? and put food on the table, when it's hard enough just to get up in the morning and face the challenges of an ordinary day, let alone in the life of a pandemic. We need to hear things like, come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't know about you, but I like comfortable passages. Passages that provide a cushion in an oftentimes harsh world. Some of us like to believe that Jesus was talking only to his disciples and that the rest of us are excused from denying ourselves and carrying crosses and things like that. Others of us insist that Jesus is the only one called to die on a cross, and that because he did, the rest of us do not have to. Then again, we all know people who have taken this hard saying and make it their life motto. They put themselves down all the time and put away any comfort as if it were poisonous to the soul. They deny themselves the smallest of pleasures in life, like an extra slice of chocolate cake, as if a simple happiness were some kind of disloyalty to God. Surely that cannot be what this passage is about. Surely Jesus does not mean that the only way we can follow him is to take every shortcut to our graves. But if he does not mean that, what does he mean? Do we really have to die for love of him? Isn't there some way to love him and live? The whole conversation came about because Peter was asking the same questions. The disciples were off by themselves with Jesus. In the passage just before this one, Jesus asked the disciples who they thought he really was. And Peter gave the right answer. You are the Christ, he said. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus rewarded him and called Peter a rock, a rock on which he would build his church. Peter begins with, to act like a cheap battery that wears out. Because as soon as Jesus begins to tell his disciples what is about to be required of him, how he is about to walk into a trap set for him in Jerusalem, where he will suffer and be killed and be raised from the dead, Peter bursts forth. God forbid, Lord, he says. This shall never happen to you. Peter's batteries go haywire. It's too much for him to bear, too much to imagine, too much to take in. He concentrates on the first part only. 
Let's find a way to get out of it, to go around it. Why take any unnecessary risks? Have you ever known someone who was headed that way? The newspapers occasionally run stories about them. The man who rushes into a burning building to see if anyone has been left inside. The woman who jumps into the hole in a frozen lake to rescue a child who's fallen through. These are the dramatic stories. But there are quiet ones too. The doctor who gives free medical service to inner city children. A college student who helps tutoring a middle school student, those who help out at the local soup kitchen. It's only human, I think, to admire such people, but there is an equally human part of us that bristles and our defense mechanisms go haywire. We want to be like Peter and shout out, God forbid, Lord, a voice from deep down inside of us. Isn't there an easier way to do what you want? What if you get hurt? What if you get killed? God forbid that something should happen to you. That is, in so many words, what Peter says to Jesus. And right or wrong, he has a way of saying what the rest of us are thinking. Imagine then being one of the other disciples listening in on the conversation. Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. One minute, Peter is the rock, and the next, Satan. What did Peter do wrong? Jesus cautions with a loud, red, blinking light. Don't jump at easy alternatives, safe alternatives, or flashy alternatives. All things that can lead us down pathways, not to heaven, but to self-righteousness. And if there's anything I learned in my life, that it is God is less concerned about sinning is God is concerned about self-righteousness. Even Jesus was tempted to find the easier path to avoid the pain and suffering he was called to endure, but looks at the second half of the equation, which of course says life. It says salvation. I like Peter, as I've said on many other occasions, because he's willing to wrestle with the question, does Jesus mean that all of us who want to be on God's side better go out and get ourselves killed as soon as possible? I want to believe that God gives me my life, not that God is eager to take it away, that God wills my survival, not my funeral. In truth, what God cares about is not whether or not I have chocolate cake, but with the quality of my life. The deep secret of Jesus' harsh words to us in this passage is that our fear of suffering and death robs us of life. Because when we get wrapped up in fear, we miss the whole point, which is life. The deep secret of Jesus's words is that the way to have abundant life is not to save it, but to spend it and to give it away. Because life is like a butterfly, you cannot contain it in a small box. It must get out and fly. Or better yet, life in a glass of champagne cannot be poured into a glass and then put in the refrigerator for three days. It loses its zest, its bubbles, its life. Peter wanted to prevent Jesus from doing that. He did not want his life to be spilled, to be wasted, 
he wanted to save it and preserve it. What he forgot, apparently, was that Jesus' supply of life was never-ending. That what poured out of him poured out of an underground source so strong that the more he gave of himself, the more he had. An unceasing stream, flowing, providing. Listen to the second half of what Matthew says. And on the third day, be raised. It's easy to get stuck on the fear, suffering, and the death part. We got that far and said, God forbid it, Lord, without finishing the sentence, without noticing that after the suffering and fear part, there's life again, abundant life, life for all of us that can never be cut off. The other day I came upon the Jesus bookstore in a nearby town. On the front windows were two paintings, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the left was a picture of Calvary. And over it were the words, Jesus died for us. Just then a large truck temporarily covered up the painting on the right side. As I sat at the traffic light looking on, I thought to myself, I was missing the point. There's something I'm not getting. There's a terrible advertisement for the Christian community. But just then, the large truck pulled away from the front of the Jesus bookstore. And on the right side was the other half of the story. A beautiful painting of an empty tomb of the resurrection. I got goosebumps on my arms, not because the air conditioner in my car was going full blast, but because I know deep down in my utmost parts, secret compartments of my soul, that we have been given the greatest gift, not for our own possession, but a life to be shared. In that experience, in front of the Jesus bookstore, I realized once again of the eternal gift of life that we all have been given. Amen. Mm -hmm.